All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for Redefining Admin Permissions. We're coming to you live from the Circle office here in Cincinnati, where it is very sunny, but a very cold 37 degrees. I hope it's much warmer wherever you are today. We're really happy to be here with you today to talk you through the changes that are coming very soon to our admin permissions. Maddie, are you a winter person? I hate the winter. I do too. It really does suck my little lip. I don't know how I ended up in Ohio, right? That's the question I ask myself all the time. So I'm here, I'm Rachel Foles, I'm Director of Product here at Circle, and I'm joined by our Director of Customer Success and all-time best office crafter, Maddie. How are you doing, Maddie? Good, how are you? I'm good. I also want to mention that it's your birthday. Happy it, birthday. Yes, this is how everyone celebrates their 38th birthday is with a webinar. A live about, webinar. A live webinar about admin permissions. Of course, they should. Yes. <laughs> so hopefully one day you'll be 38 and able to celebrate this way. <laughs> So for today's webinar, if you have any questions, please submit them through the Q&A or the chat um, icons located in the bottom of your webinar screen. We will be recording today's webinar as well, so we will share the recording link with you shortly after. Um, it's a great resource for you and your team to be using as we move closer to the release date of these admin permissions. And as part of the release education that we'll do leading up to this change, we'll also have this video available for you. Absolutely. All right, so as you've guessed and you've heard, we will be discussing our upcoming changes to admin permissions. Here's what else you can expect in, from today's webinar. We will be discussing the why behind the admin permission changes, um, ad, admin permission changes today versus tomorrow. So what will you see in terms of your what current roles you're um, permitted to have today? And then tomorrow with the new release, what permissions will you be granted? We will also give you some examples of admin permission configuration. So talking about real live roles at your company or your organization and what we might suggest those admin permissions look like. We're also gonna dive deeper into Private Blast. This is a feature that we released a few weeks ago, but really becomes uh, applicable to our clients with this admin update as well. So we're excited to, to revisit that. And then of course, we'll discuss release information, timelines, um, expectations there, and then we'll open it up for Q&A. So the admin permissions that are in place today are the result of eight years of really rapid growth. As our focus has shifted from to serving business communicators specifically, we've experienced some advanced use cases and structures that our original permission levels as they were set up um, weren't really ready to support. Our communicators using Circle today need more control over who can view and edit certain areas of the platform. With more of our communicators are working in distributed teams where they have multiple offices, multiple permission levels, it became really important that the permissions were easy to understand and easy to grant. So we spent a lot of time talking to our communicators, some of them might be on this call today, asking them about what challenges they're facing with doling out and managing their admin permissions in the system today. And then our success team, they tirelessly captured and shared every time that one of you came to them um, saying that you had an issue with admin permissions or something you were trying to do with admin permissions. So there was a lot of lead up. Um, and then we looked at the data for how our organizations have structured their permissions today to make sure that after this change goes into effect, you're not going to be without the permissions you need to get your work done. So um, the rules are pretty simple. We wanted to make it, uh, we wanted to make admin permissions much easier to understand. But we also wanted to make Circle more secure for you. Because of the way things are built now, 89% of our Circle team members are owners. It's and a those, lot. It's a lot. Too many. It's too many. Um, you know, and I was a communicator for a long time, and granting that ownership permission um, comes with a lot of trust into the people you're granting that. Mm -hmm. We want to make this much easier for you. We want to make more people able to help you in the platform, more people able to contribute to your content goals. And then... We wanted to keep the interface really simple so that when you log in after this change, you're not really going to feel a big difference. It's not going to be this big, heavy thing that you've got to tackle on a Monday morning. What you're able to do today, for the most part, you'll be able to do the day after the change. We also wanted to clarify the permissions for you. Everything at the feature level um, is going to be written in plain language that's easy to understand, that's for real people, and anyone can understand what they're able to do. So those are the rules for this project. So now let's talk about permissions now versus um, the upcoming release, what that's going to look like. 
So in today's version, you have permissions such as owner, editor, author, team member, moderatee, or moderator. Just in general, those terms are pretty ambiguous. Um, so, you know, I spent a lot of time with the clients, taking them through onboarding, answering questions, and this is probably the biggest one that I get is, mm -hmm. what should these permission sets be? So today, you have all these permission sets, um, and to, to have ownership access of your current account, you get all privileges. You can make any changes across any of the, the main functions, so content manager, audience manager, insights, even your settings. Uh, we're going to break that out into an admin permission. So you will have, you know, maybe one to three, you can have technically as many as you'd like, any admin permissions, but this is going to give that ownership permission to just a select few and break down the, the functionality deeper after that. Um, some other things that you are familiar with today is that we have the editor permission. So this privilege allows you to access, create, edit, and approve content, but this doesn't include blasts. Another thing that you're familiar with is the authorship. If you have your authorship turned on today, it will allow you to uh, provide at attribution for content being published. And you can say, hey, this one's published from Rachel Foles. Mm -hmm. And that'll come through on the newsletter. Um, and then we have moderate and moderator, um, which is the bane <laughs> of my existence. It really is. And even just discussing in the audience, you have to, uh, here in the office, you have to really enunciate. Right. Is it a moderator? Moderator. <laughs> which one are you? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So in today's version, if you're a moderatee, that means the content that you publish um, will be hold, held in the queue first for a moderate or to then officially approve. So it's basically a holding cell and kind of like a checking point. So as you can see here in that little graph, um, today's permission set versus tomorrow. So we're now going to have one admin account and then the rest are just team members and you're providing them the permissions to perform their job functions. Yep. So breaking those down. All right. So in our new permissions, like Maddie said, there are only admins and team members. A team member can have any permission. And when you log in on that first day, they will. Admins have all the permissions, including, including adding, adding and editing team members. Evidently, I need a phonics lesson as well. <laughs> um, adding and editing team members is something that only administrators will be able to do. So um, the highest permission that you hold today will be the one that we're going to map your future state to. So if you are an owner today, you'll be an admin tomorrow. So in our example that you see on our screen here, I am an admin, but David's not. I'm inviting him, but he hasn't accepted yet. And Sam has some feature level permission specific to the creation of things and the measurement, but not ultimately he can't send blast. So that's a little pre of what we're going to show you next. Absolutely. I think it's important to note there that if you have a lot of owners in your account today, it's going to be worth um, revisiting that with your team to say, hey, we need to modify these permissions um, and, and make sure that you are kind of going through an audit. I know I have some time scheduled with some of our, our clients already, and I'm more than happy to schedule additional times with any other clients who have not already reached out um, regarding the, that audit process. I'm more than happy to walk you guys through that. So if you're currently an owner, you will emerge from this change as an admin. You will have the keys to the kingdom, so to speak. You can do anything in the Circle platform. One unique thing here that we're going to keep mentioning, kind of the hammer at home, is that admins are the only one they can add and remove team members. That idea kind of came from um, you being able to grant as much um, privileges as you need to um, and being able to only grant privileges to those that you already have. So that was kind of the final control state um, so that only admins can do that. So next we have editor. So if you're currently an editor of your Circle account, your permissions will change a bit with this release but you will still have the same functionality you're primarily used to, to having access to. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're an editor today, tomorrow your admin permissions, I'm sorry, your team member permissions update will consist of the ability to create content, uh, the ability to approve content, manage content settings. This is where you can make revisions to your organizational categories and all that fun stuff. And then lastly, you'll have the ability to manage insights. So take a peek at the metrics and the data behind the system. So in the current permissions, a lot of our orgs use the author's permission as a way to give key company leaders an attributed content voice. 
in the new system, authorship isn't necessarily permission, but rather a team member setting. So if you're only an author in the current circle system, you're going to come in the day after this update and have the create content, manage content settings, manage insights permission with that content attribution turned on show as author. Perfect. And that's also controlled the same way it always has been at the org level where they get to decide whether or not authors and individual voices is something they prioritize. So next we have moderate as moderate. <laughs> so as we mentioned before, um, in today's version, if you're a moderate, this means that the content that you uh, publish or create was, will be held in the queue where it needs a moderate or to approve it for final um, accessibility in your newsletter. So with the moderate, e, if you're a moderate e today, the features and functionality you'll have access to once this release is available will be around content creation. It will still be held in the queue, so keep that in mind. Um, you will have the avail ability to manage content and then manage insights as well. So right now our moderators are the grand approvers of content. In our new permissions, they'll keep that crown, they can still approve content, but they will lose that ability to add team members. That's purely a permission for our admins. So all the things that moderators can do are listed there on the left side of your screen. You'll notice that we're using the same person as was our admin because that's a common combination that our moderators are the ones actually able to approve. Absolutely. So we know it's really hard to imagine something like this for your teams and your systems. So we wanted to bring this into your real life with some examples of a large team structure. So an example here um, would be the admin permission. So again, this is going to be like the big kahuna who has the ability to add new team members, grant permissions, revise permissions, all that fun stuff. So some examples of just titles or people in your organization, and you might not have these exact titles, but you can kind of create a, a parallel to, to what your organization would consider these roles. So an admin in our minds might be someone um, like a VP of communications, your director of comms, or a manager of comms. And primarily it's gonna be my team as on the customer success side, I imagine as being our primary contact. So who do we typically go to if we need something or um, you know, we've been working with you throughout the launch process, you're kind of running the account. Mm -hmm. um, that's where you'd want to set that person up as an admin versus a team member. Right, that makes perfect sense because um, at the end of the day, there um, are some people that need to be able to do all the things and Correct. need to have that control. Yeah. So next kind of on that tier, we're talking about department head managers. These high level folks need access to communicate to your audience, the audience you guys share together and their individual audience as well. They'll need to create and approve their own content, skipping that queue if they want to. They might need to be able to create and send blasts and they want to measure their performance using insights. And you might trust them to add audience members and create segments as well with the uh, manage audience permission. Absolutely. So next we have um, the team member's permission, something like a coordinator. So if you are a coordinator, you want to be able to create content, create blast, but not necessarily approve that content or approve or schedule those email blasts. So these might be people like coordinators or, um, or people who are just newer to your team. They also, you know, we would suggest giving them access to insights so they can start to see how their content is performing. What content ideas should they be really focusing on? And then, of course, giving them potentially the, the option to manage that audience. And finally, we know that it's going to take a lot of hands to make your modern comms team work. So with our new permissions, you can decide exactly how much access your contractors and interns need to get the work done you need them to. It's really easy to add and remove permissions too. You don't have to, like we do in the current system, kind of get out your Rosetta Stone of admin permissions to figure out what you're actually doing. Here you can say, I need her to do the following things. And when that's over, I can remove that permission or I can up her permission as she um, proves your capability in this area. So um, I really like that part of it where you it doesn't become so cumbersome to them. So um, something we might suggest for interns and contractors is the ability to create content, create blasts, but they're not approving it. They're not seeing any of the insights. They can't make the ultimate decision about what your audience sees. Right. So it's like another level of just to make yeah. sure that everything looks right. There's a second set of eyes, yeah. someone who's a little bit more of, of a higher position can approve those final versions. Right. And it, you know, when other people can contribute, like we talk about, 
um, then it doesn't feel so heavy right. to you. Yeah, it's not you know, all getting on more you. people in, yeah. but keeping them in a very safe fenced area for right. them. All right. So the next one would be someone on the data side. I've mm -hmm. been working with a lot of clients who have dedicated um, data analysts, which yeah. is really cool. Um, we ourselves just hired a, a data scientist, which has been really fun on, on our side of things. And it, it gets me excited to see clients working towards that, to have someone who's really jumping into those metrics and the numbers um, to make the account and, and the tool you know, the most valuable it can be. So if you have someone on the data side um, who might be working with uh, additional tools and let's say Google Analytics to pull together all these numbers based on your communications, that might be a role that you give insights access to. So they can export you know, CSV files with all the, the subscriber um, metrics and open rates, click-through rates, how things are performing over time. So for a data analyst or someone who's more on the data side of things, you know, simply just giving them access to insights. The only thing that they really care about um, is again, a, a new feature and something that we're excited to roll out for you guys. Yeah, and in this permissions update, you only see the features that you have access to. Mm -hmm. This is a really big benefit. So it doesn't feel, it's an invisible fence, I guess would be the best way to describe it. Because when our data analyst here goes in to log into Circle, all she's going to see is insights. That's her only available action. Right. And that doesn't make you feel like there's a bunch of fun stuff that you can't see. It's just, this is the thing you came to do. It really simplifies that UI for you. Yeah, I, I think the scariest thing, um, you know, I hear clients say is that, yeah, I've added, you know, new team members, but I had to give them ownership permission, which gives them the whole slew of functionality that they can play around with. And their first message to that new person on their team is do not touch X, Y, Z, yeah. only go to this tab. And you know, that kind of, it sends a, a shrill up my back because that, that doesn't seem like a, a, a place where we're helping you guys maximize your team and your team's resources. So this is going to be a really important one um, as, as we continue to move forward. So we know you're excited to see this in action. In this next section, we're gonna show you how to add and change your permissions in your circle. So updating a user. So this will still live under the settings um, of your account, which is the top, in the top right corner, you'll, you'll click the gear icon like you're used to today. And then under um, the team members permission set, little tab on the left-hand side, you will see how you can easily search for admins so now you can search for their name and find their specific admin set and make modifications. This, this section, keep in mind, is only visible to admins. Mm -hmm. So no one else except for admins on the account. So again, those VP of comms or um, the comms director should have access to this page. When you go through and do that audit after this is released, you can easily update those team member permissions through this console. You cl click the little edit button, or you can also click the little three dots um, within the, the admin, I'm sorry, the team member portal. Mm -hmm. Once you click that open, it's going to allow you to understand what permission sets are most important for that person. So we wanna make it really easy to understand, so it's simple language, it's all spelled out. You can even update a team member's name or add a photo for them. They can also update their name on, on their own once they log in or their own photo. Um, and then you can easily check and uncheck the permissions that, that they have available. So if a team member is given perm, um, admin permissions and then they want to be able to do all the things, all you'll do is just simply click the admin um, the admin box at the very top. So that'll give them full access to all features and functionality. Yeah, and you know, when we broke these out, it's really future-proofing us for um, everything that we're planning on adding to Circle in the next six, nine, and 12 months, that we're able to um, add permissions and map permissions in a more effective way moving forward. Absolutely. So, and I do want to visit the search one more time, if I can go back, because this is new, and I, I think it's one of those... Um, small things that will make a big difference for yep. our everyday users that are working in those distributed teams that we talked about. When you have 30 team members in an organization, finding the right one, um, this search should help you quite a bit with that. It's the simple things in life. It really is. <laughs> so if we want to invite a new user, the flow looks really um, 
really similar to what it what we showed you on the previous screen. So um, insights and content creation is on by default, but you could always turn this off. So you have to have a permission to be a team member. Um, if you wanna come in here and add someone, you can't leave, you can't make them a team member unless they have something that they can do in Circle. So um, we started with create content view insights as a way of saying, these are kind of the safest things that somebody can do, but these can always be unchecked. And if you want to give someone manage setting permissions and that's the only permission you want to give them, then you are empowered to do so. Great. Um, authors toggled on, if they have show authors on at the organization level, that's right here, is this person an author in the team member section? Um, and that will just give them content attribution like we talked about earlier. So essentially kind of the same flow to update as it is to invite, same kind of language, clarity, all that stuff is so important. Yeah, and I think it's important to note too that's something we didn't provide as an example. Um, but if you're gonna give someone just editing rights to your, your account settings, that might be someone who is on your graphics team, who's really only in there to upload the, the welcome, um, welcome email header photo yeah. or the newsletter header photo or to set your favicon or your hex colors. So again, breaking it down to say, hey, what, what is this person really trying to accomplish in Circle? We don't want to make it more complicated. We want to just get them straight to the point, get them where they need it in, in the platform and kind of have them start running. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so this next one, Private Blast. So as I mentioned a little earlier, this is a feature that we released a few weeks back. And we've heard how important it is for teams to be able to send one-off emails around earning reports, um, things that legally can't be seen, you know, other than the C-suite, um, additional internal transitions. So these types of messages should only be seen by the recipient, so the distribution list or, or group that you're, you're delivering that email blast to, the admins of the account who have access to see everything, and the team member who generated and sent that email, right, mm -hmm. that, e that one-off email blast. So with Private Blast, you now have the ability to limit the view of that in individual blast and the metrics around it. So only, again, the admins of the account and the team members who's, who have delivered that email blast will have access to it. So it's pretty easy once you're in the email blast functionality or tab of, of Circle, you will click the, the, at the top of the screen, there'll be three little dots. You just click that dot, those dots, and it'll allow you to turn on private blast. Again, limiting the view. And even on the insight side of things, because we do provide a preview of email blast, that will be restricted as well. Yeah, and so what are some things that you're hearing from the communicators that they're trying to do that kind of prompted this? change? Yeah, it's a great question. So in terms of our internal communications clients, they really have messages that should only be seen by the C-suite or specific team members. You know, someone's leaving their department. They don't want to communicate that outwardly to every department. They just really want to make sure it's getting to the right people first. Um, I think earnings reports is another good one. And it's really important. Again, you, you don't need everyone in your company, every person on your internal comms team to be seeing those types of messages. Mm -hmm. um, it's really just for the eyes of the people who've created it, who already know about this information and, uh, and the recipients. Yeah, and this really does come into play once admin permissions, this version of admin permissions rolls out because you'll be able to do the send blast permission, which will allow someone to send it and that will make all this work together. Yeah, exactly, it's beautiful. So, uh, I know everyone's like, but when, but when? And I, <laughs> I love this question because Maddie and I are the same way. Um, so here's what we think so far. Um, roughly the release is planned for March 7th. This is going to be a Saturday release to really minimize um, any sort of disruption in your work. Um, Maddie will be communicating with you guys in the week leading up to it to let you know about what the scheduled downtime is. When I say downtime, the plan is for it to be far less than an hour of total downtime. The only thing that you will probably feel for our Monday through Friday business communicators is that when you um, go to start your work on Monday morning after the release, you will have you will be logged out. So you'll have to log back in. Um, and then that's it. Yep. And you know, everything that you have today, you should have available to you. And then take that chance, maybe um, 
Monday afternoon when your brain's just about done to look through your admin permissions as they stand today and think about strategically how can you remap them. Of course, reach out to the success team about some ways to do that if you feel a little stuck yeah, in absolutely. that process. Maddie loves solving problems. I do. Legit. I, I just untied a huge knot in our, our Ethernet cord. So, and that was like the funnest thing I've done all day. So. Uh, yes, <laughs> and this is true because I wanted to do it, but then I saw her and I said, Maddie, do you like to untie knots? And we're talking about probably a 50 foot cord. Yeah. And she said, yes. <laughs> and I said, okay. So. Love to problem solve. So yes. anything you guys have, you know, an audit or review of your current admin permissions, I'd love to schedule time with you guys. So I know we've covered a lot of ground on this webinar, um, but it's really important change that we keep you guys in the loop on. We would love to take a few moments to open it up for questions. And uh, again, keep in mind that this will be provided as a resource um, and a recording after today's webinar. So while we're waiting, um, what are some of the common challenges with permissions that you hope are gonna be solved with this enhancement? So the biggest one for me is again, you know, the thought of teams adding um, owners to their account because they need one piece of functionality mm -hmm. and then they have to send those messages you know before they add them as an admin to say right. hey do not touch content manager don't touch settings only touch blast email blast so that's the biggest one for me um, but above and above that I would also say just the the ability to collaborate so you don't have to be afraid to add someone if they have a content idea give them give them the keys to to kind of start the car and give them the ability to hop in the front seat. And of course, make sure that, you know, if they're, they're a team driver, you can, um, you know, monitor their behavior before, before they, they get their actual driver's license. Yeah. But I think it's important to, to allow for that team collaboration and to, to provide a more seamless um, experience when using the platform. Mm -hmm. When you hop into a platform and you have all these pieces of functionality that you've never touched, you don't know what, what it does, it, it you know, becomes, a hindrance and a burden on you like oh I'm afraid to hop in we yeah. want to limit that too yeah that sounds super fun absolutely all right I got a couple other questions coming through um, let's see from Kristen will these permission changes allow us to limit who can send from what sender that's a great question Kristen um, this change does not uh, embody that specific feature request that I know the rest of, of your team has submitted in the past. Um, that more or less is going to be towards the, the changes we're making around so segments. segmentation. Yes. Yeah, so anything else? You yeah, have? I can add a little bit of color to that. Um, Chris, and segments are something that are a very major tackle for us that we're really excited to bring a new way of thinking. I, I know it sounds very software-y, so please forgive me, but like a completely new way of thinking about how to effectively get you where you need to go with segments. Um, we agree as a team that we we can do better here. And so that's a problem that the product team is really looking forward to solving um, that we're meeting about in the coming weeks to talk about how we can get you both the um, control and the function that you guys all need. So yes, um, but that is not included in the scope of this one. Yeah, however, I will mention that this is a perfect use case. So let's say you have a group of people um, that can design and curate those one-off email blasts, but you don't want to give them the, the permission or ability to finalize and send that, um, that email blast. So in that case, you would, you would set those email blast creators as just, you know, creating blasts, but you don't give them the permission set to send or schedule the blast. Mm -hmm. So that would be the next level up where that person um, who has the ability to schedule and send those blasts can hop in and, and make sure that they're sending from the right VP or director or leader at your company and they have the correct distribution list or segment attached to that email blast. Yeah. So, it, you know, it, I know it doesn't get us directly to where you guys want um, today, but it's a great, you know, step in the right direction. All right. So another question that we have. In terms of the feedback process, um, what did this look like for this? I know you talked a little bit at the mm -hmm. beginning of the webinar of you know collecting this information, yeah. but I know you guys spent a lot of time speaking with clients. Yeah. So what did that look like, and, and how did that kind of shape where where you guys took this this change or update? 
Yeah. So anytime that I was speaking to clients in the months that we were thinking about this, I was asking them about this. Like, what are the challenges? What are you trying to do? Where are you falling short? What have you liked in the past that you've experienced? Um, also, if any of you have ever done any of my like prototype or um, beta calls, you'll know that I ask a lot about what systems are you using in and outside work? Um, you know, are you an Instagram person? Are you a Twitter person? Um, do you just love your ESPN app? That's the kind of stuff that tells um, us on the product side about kind of what experiences feel familiar, what experiences feel good, and what are some expected behaviors that you like to experience. And so if there's, um, you know, we often put out calls for feedback um, on future enhancements, and I would love to have any of you guys on those for the future because your voices and your experiences matter to us so much because we really um, make this for you. We don't make it for us. So um, I just love hearing about those things. Absolutely. I think we have one more question. Of course, if we didn't get to, to your questions today, we can take it offline and, and I can ping you individually. Um, but here we have a question around, um, around the accessibility of you know, a, a table or graphed view. So will you be providing a table view or a one sheet on the current admin permissions versus the new admin permissions to help us prep for this change? And that's yeah. a great question. Absolutely. Yeah. So in our communication, um, you know, from this webinar itself, we can include it there as well as, um, as the official notice when we, we inform you of, hey, this is the official date that we're going to be pushing this to production. Um, we'll make sure that we include those pieces of information directly in, in a place where you can access it. Yeah, absolutely. We try to make our uh, release education kind of multi-tier um, webinars for the visual people, uh, blogs for the people who like to read, um, graphics for those who like to draw comparisons. So we try to make sure that we hit everyone the best way that they learn. Yeah, absolutely. And we do have one more quick question. It's a great one. So We'll squeeze it in. Uh, so Mandeep's asking, will promos or promotional banners be only accessible to admins um, and users who get assigned permissions to edit settings? Um, so that, that is correct. So in this case, if you're an admin, you'll have access to update the, the promotional banners, or if you have access to edit settings, you'll again have access to, to edit those promotional banners, which lives under your account settings and then under email, um, email newsletter. Yep. So you can give anyone the permission to edit settings um, and that can be anybody. Right. Just yeah. like your branding manager or right. branding coordinator who's setting up the, the branding images for your newsletter header, all yep. that fun stuff. Thank you for your question. Absolutely. All right. Well, that's all for us today. Yes. Happy birthday. Well, thank you so much. It was wonderful spending it with all of you. And if you have any questions, of course, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're original. So we have Rachel at circle.com and Maddie at circle.com. Very easy to find. I know. Very <laughs> easy to find. Um, and thank you all so much for spending your afternoon with us. Have a great day. Bye, guys.